I think poker is the most mentally tough sport to play in the world, without a doubt. You've mm -hmm. got to be able to handle defeat. If you can't, you'll go stir crazy, bounce your head off the wall. I'm told. Boy, poker. those few times you get there and mm -hmm. make a nice cash makes up for all those horrible beats it. and bad yeah. walkouts that you have in the room. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's amazing how one good score, you know, <laughs> just keeps you fresh for another year or so. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Well, I don't know. You'd be amazed at the number of people that you find moaning uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. a month after a, a huge win. Yeah, you yeah. know, they bust a tournament in uh, on day one, and they're yeah. posting bad beat stories on Facebook. And <laughs> well, that was, you know, it's always the thing. M main event champions can't complain for their lifetime. Yeah, that's fair. totally. Won the World Series main event. That's it. You just totally agree. Yeah. Or the one drop or anything like that. I agree. I'm sure we've all seen past main event champions uh, tut and uh, curse at oh. things there. Hard to take them seriously when they do so. <laughs> well, there must be some sort of statute limitations on that now. Like if we go back, I mean, does yeah. does money maker can he start complaining again? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, well, I did make a vow that if I didn't go out on the bubble, the one drop tournament. You know, I was down to ten. They paid nine. You know, tenth was, I mean, tenth was zero. Ninth was well over a million. Mm -hmm. And I said, please, Lord, just don't let me go out on the bubble here. I'll never complain. All right, this uh, seems like a pretty rudimentary flop situation. It's a dryish board. I know there's two hearts. It feels like Thomas is supposed to bet here, but maybe you guys missed it, but he bets really big. He bets 14 million into 19 million. This feels like 2007 sizing or something, just like the please go away sizing. But on a board like this, it feels like Chidwick's reaction is going to be relatively binary. Is there any value in sizing it up here with just queen jack high and no backdoor hearts? I mean, there's a tiny value, but not much. I mean, this feels a little bit like he's bringing a hand grenade to, you know, like a knife fight or something like that. I don't know why you need to just bring out this level of artillery. Um, we might fold out certain things. We sort of set up maybe stuff on the turn two where even if Chidwick has a call here, which obviously he does with this hand where he's top pair, um, because Boyvin bets so much, like there's a threat of really big bets coming later as well. Of course, that's problematic from Boyvin's point of view because that's more chips out of his chip stack when he doesn't have anything. And Chiwick, if Chiwick were to call, clearly has a flush draw, a deuce, or a nine almost always. I guess some pocket pairs also. But that's it. Like we are folding out a lot of his range, even hands that are beating us. But we'd be he's in the big blind. It was a min raise. He's going to fold out so many things anyway with a tiny bet like five and a half million. Right, and I mean, five and a half million, maybe you get called by ace high that you don't want to sometimes. So if you want to be a little bit more, making sure you fold out more of Chidwick's range, maybe bet nine million. But I feel like that's enough, and you're saving five million the times that you're going to get called. So for this to be profitable, there has to be some sort of metagame implication. Like, Boyvin's the guy you don't want to call against because he's going to bet big all the time, and he's trying to establish that reputation or something. But in this one instance, I don't see a ton of profitability to this size. Agreed. Speaking of profitability... Talk about that tournament, Levy. The tournament is amazing. It'll blow your freaking eyes out because it's a thousand buy-ins guaranteed. We never get more than like 180 players. There's a cap of 300. Costs less than a dollar to play. It's incredible in all ways. It's a Bitcoin-only poker site too, which means, well, you know, it means you get your money out in 90 minutes. You have to sign up though using the link that we tweet out about nitrogen. Every so often, you got to go to our Twitter and check it out. That's the only way you can get access to this amazing tournament. Get on there, get you some poker, and kick butt. About going on the bubble again as long as I live the rest of my life. <laughs> you made that. Going, and I made it there, so I have no. I can't complain if I ever go right on the bubble again. And uh, you got that in writing. And of course, you wake so up. I've come close, but uh, I'm not complaining anyway, no matter what. Of course, I know you wake up each day and thank Sam Trickett for busting that bubble yeah, for you Sam nice and quick. Sam Trickett will always be my poker hero. <laughs> <laughs> called a 4.2 million raise in that spot with a King 8 offsuit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget it. And he had the guy beat the guy at Queen 10. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> well, look at this part. It's quite interesting when we're talking there. Thomas went for nearly a full pot C bet on 9 deuce deuce with his Queen Jack. It's checked down since then. Wow. Interesting sizing from Thomas. Full it was, pot. Wow. Yeah, he, he fired huge on this flop. And it's run out running hearts. Stevie's hand got weaker and weaker on every street. Well, it is on him. 47 in the pot. Again, as, as you were saying, this is so big because if, if you win this pot, you'll stop your opponent winning it. And you can see how mm -hmm. close they are in chips yeah. now. So it makes a big difference yeah. to your position in the tournament. Thomas... Seemingly has no choice but to, to bluff here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Stevie's got a nine, you know, huge amount of the time here. All right. I guess a deuce, some deuce, deuces that doesn't check raise. But majority are nine, nine X here. And 
Uh, is it worth risking half the pot? Something like 20 million, 22 million here? Yeah, you definitely don't need to go big. You can you can feasibly have a reasonable amount of, of flushes that um, bet flop and check turn. You know one uh, you know one heart. I mean. Right. Um, and like he's got, but with the jack of hearts, for example. Right, if you had queen jack off and he made this yeah. big bet on the flop. So it's, it is believable. Um, so he needs to make a better size where he can have, you know, a jack high flush or a ten high flush rather right. than, you know, betting pot where he's only representing a, a much narrower value range. Right. So we've discussed quite a lot this gym this week, and that's the, the thing. Not necessarily betting big to make your opponents fold, but betting smaller to open up your value range. Mm -hmm. And well, it looks like he's listening. You he's called 20 it, Mike, million. 20 million. Boy. Yeah, Mike got on. <laughs> Perfect size bet. Chibuk <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, knows he's not going to bet a pair of kings here. He's probably just going to check it down. Yeah. So this is the kind of guy that's capable of. Steve is going to go for looking the, him up here. The check rip, rep the nines full. <laughs> I mean, he is that good a player. He could make this call with two nines. This would be a phenomenal call. One hundred. Yes, wow. he's gone for the check rip. He's repping the nines full. Wow. There we go. That's my awesome. boy, Stevie. Well, I'm glad I stayed to the end. And that's why he's Stephen Chidwick and you're nobody. Well, that's not fair, Thomas Voivin. But, I mean, everyone knows who Stephen Chidwick is. And he just makes these kinds of plays. It almost seems unfair that he gets to do this to the very nice-seeming, although strangely dressed, Voivin. Grant, how did this even come about? Well, it came about because Stephen Chidwick was born... On an auspicious day, a meteor hit the earth at just the right angle at the time of his birth. But no, it came about starting with the turn. Because the turn is an important time in this hand where Chidwick hates the card, for sure. Boyvin probably doesn't love it either because Chidwick makes some flushes. But a bigger question is, should Boyvin be betting the turn as a bluff now when Chidwick is checked again? I mean, I don't think so. A Chidwick has a pair or a flush almost always now. Doesn't seem like a great time to bet, but the problem, of course, is when Boyvin is betting as a bluff, he's usually got a good equity, meaning he's got like the Ace of Hearts in his hand, maybe the King of Hearts. Now we see he can't have the King of Hearts because that's the river. So it's usually going to be the Ace of Hearts. But that tells us something, right? Because it goes check, check, and a heart comes, Boyvin is less likely to have the nut flush here. He can still have it, sure, once in a while, but a lot of the times that's going to be a great bluffing card for him on the turn. Right. So. He does check. We get to the river. We get the fourth heart. So now if Chidwick had like a medium flush, he hates that card. Should Boyvin bluff the river? Because clearly Boyvin is bluffing. We know that Chidwick's raise works, and it's not that impressive that it works because he's against queen high. But should Boyvin be bluffing? I mean, look, he shouldn't be bluffing if he knows Stephen Chidwick's going to check raise him. But outside of that, yeah, I kind of think he should be bluffing here. He's got queen high. There's no way he's good. He's never winning right now, and I would expect we're going to successfully fold out a bunch of one pair of hands, maybe even some weird ace highs if the ace X of diamonds decided to call on the flop. Not too likely when we bet so much, but the nines, maybe pocket sixes, pocket fives, pocket eights, pocket fours, pocket threes, stuff like that. Like We can successfully fold that out, in theory anyway, if we bet. Now, maybe not in practice based on what happened, but in theory, I would like taking a shot at this. He only bets twenty million into forty-seven. That feels about right. We should successfully be able to fold out a nine, right? You would think, but Chidwick's not interested in calling or folding. He no. decides it's time for a raise. So, what leads Chidwick to this decision, and is it ultimately a good decision? Because we see that it works. Clearly, it works against Queen Jack of Spades. But is this just a cool play that Chidwick does all the time, or is this a good, well thought out play? I mean, I think it's. Both. It's super cool for sure. It's also pretty well thought out, right? Like like we were saying, the check on the turn sets it up for Thomas to just not have very many nut flushes here. If Boyvin has the Jack of Hearts or the Queen of Hearts and is betting for value, which I think he would bet for value here with those hands. I think it makes sense to bet for value with those hands. Guess what? They are they've they've locked up two hundred and twenty five thousand euro. First place is one point seven million. Third place is a million euro, and Boyvin's never won more at this point in his life than 300,000 euro in a tournament. Chirwick, of course, wins millions all the time. It's no big deal to him. But you can put unbelievable pressure on a hand like the Queen of Hearts, the Jack of Hearts, or even the Ace of Hearts with the paired nature of the board when Stephen Chirwick absolutely can have full houses. And the only full house that really makes sense for Boyvin to have is King King. Yeah, that's a really important point what you just said there at the end, because... 
it looks exactly like Boyvin has the Queen or Jack of Hearts if he has value and not a bluff. Of course, against a bluff, Tudwick's just doing a just-in-case play and is going to win anyway, and it's fine, whatever. But against a Jack or Queen of Hearts, this is going to work a lot of the time. If Boyvin has a full house, he's not folding. But Boyvin doesn't really have many full houses, and that's a really important part of this because the heart comes on the turn. If Boyvin had two sevens and miracled the seven on the turn, he would be so happy to bet that against Stephen Chidwick, who's going to be like, how can you bet this? I have a flush, or how can you do this when I can rep a flush? Or it, same thing with two nines, which Stephen Chidwick blocks, which probably helps Stephen Chidwick choose this as a combo that he bluffs with, rather than if he had five, sixes, four, or something like that. Chidwick probably does not bluff those hands, right? He probably just gives up with those hands. But having a nine, he feels emboldened to take all the information he has and choose this combo as a bluffing combo, saying, look, buddy, if you have kings full, sucks for me. If you somehow check back the Ace of Hearts on the turn, maybe you'll call, but I made it 100 million, so maybe you'll freaking fold. Yeah. So deal with that, buddy. Deal with that. That's the whole Stephen Chidwick game plan is the deal with that, buddy, is what it seems like. Yeah, and when he's trying to pick which hands to bluff with, a nine is pretty good, as we're saying. Like Usually nine's full is going to bet the turn anyway if, if Boyvin had it. So a nine isn't as much of a blocker as we might ultimately want. But the best blocker in our hand that we could have is a king because, as we're saying, king's full is the only full house that makes sense. And the only king that Chiwi can reasonably show up with here as a bluff is King-9, and there just aren't very many combos of that. So I think he's got to bluff with some other things too, and a 9 is kind of the best of a bat, you know, all the other bad lesser evils. A 9 is probably the second best thing besides just King-9 because a deuce sounds like the best one because it's actually a paired board and, and deuces are the pair, but Boyvin has no deuces full having open right. plus one. He doesn't have King-deuce. He doesn't have 9-deuce suited. So a 9 is the second best type of bluffing hand. And I think Chidwick just wants to find opportunities to bluff. Even if he's over bluffing, at least he's choosing something that makes a little bit of sense to bluff with. Steven Chidwick is the problem. He is the, the danger that knocks. The one who knocks. That is him. Yeah, okay, you get it. So what do you think about all these plays? Like, ultimately, Boyvin, we thought it was interesting and, and strange that he bet so much on the flop. When a much smaller bet we think would have done the same job. We sort of ding him for that a little bit. He has had a fair amount of success both before this tournament and after this tournament. Do you guys think there is justification for betting $14 million on this flop? If so, let us know. We'd love to hear about that. Also, certainly on the river, is this a river you think Boyvin should be betting? We like the bet. And how about that Stevie Chidwick check raise? Do you like it? Do you like the sizing of it? Do you think he should go bigger? Does he need to go this big? Could he get away with $80 million and save $20 million every time he's wrong? Let us know what you think in the comments. We'd love to hear what you have to say. If you are craving more of that sweet, sweet Poker Guys content, then you got to check out the podcast, the Breakdown Poker Podcast with the Poker Guys. It's where we come up with all of our ideas, have a lot of fun doing it. You can find it anywhere. You can find podcasts basically anywhere. It's great. You should get it. Check out the podcast. And if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel.